Hey guys, uh, in this video, I will discuss about uh, what is power flow, what is the importance of power flow for power system, and uh, uh, from where uh, the the nomenclature like swing bus, PV bus, or PQ bus arrive, and why do we use uh, the numerical methods only to solve the power flow problems, and in the end, I will provide a small visualization of Gauss-Seidel method to help you understand that how numerical methods work okay so let's understand that uh, what is power flow with a little analogy there uh, if you are watching this video i assume that you have already learned dc network analysis power flow or load flow analysis is analogous to dc network analysis let's see how we apply kvl and kcl in dc circuits to find current in the branches and to find voltages at nodes and then we use this information to find the losses or power consumed by each element in the system now uh, you must have solved some KVL or KCL numericals and observe that all the equations of KVL and KCL are linear okay so let's proceed that now how that is analogous to power system analysis because we do the similar thing in uh, power flow analysis what we do that uh, we find current in all the transmission lines now the reason behind finding this is that all transmission lines have a thermal stability limit if the current will exceed beyond that limit then the transmission line may get damaged so we have to always track the value of current and for that we find uh, we use power flow analysis the second thing is we must always track the voltages of all the buses the buses are uh, representative of uh, or a representation of substations in real system and we track voltages to prevent voltage instabilities in the real system like voltage collapse or voltage surges and now we use this uh, voltage and current to find the system losses which is also a critical part of network analysis in power system so this is kind of uh, the analogy to the simpler dc system to show you that this is what is the importance of power flow analysis now one more important point is that despite power system being a dynamic system power flow analysis is a steady state analysis for a given loading now how is that uh, let me explain that uh, consider these square boxes uh, near each bus as the indicator of power generated by a generation bus or the power consumed by a load bus so uh, you know that we all are connected to power system and uh, we turn on and off our devices at our will so this increases or decreases the power consumption by us and in order to balance that power consumption the generators increase or decreases their power so it uh, makes the system a dynamic system but as you can see now that all are constant so it is like uh, we take as uh, just like a snapshot from a video we take a snapshot from the power system and use only those points to solve the power flow analysis okay uh, so proceeding further uh, now in order to understand the two important points that from where different types of buses like swing pv and pq come into the picture and why we use numerical methods uh, we have to consider this simple two bus demonstration example uh, with two generation and two loads at each bus uh, now the power flow equations are this is for real power this is for reactive power when these two equations are expanded for this simple two bus power system we get this expression now uh, the purpose of this video is to just provide an intuitive understanding of the power flow so i am not going to explain the derivation of these equations also uh, there are a lot of videos and standard book available uh, which i will provide in the description okay okay so after expanding these equations for two bus system we obtain four equations which is given here so uh, two for real power balance on each bus and two for reactive power balance it is clear that these are non-linear system of equations and uh, with experience we know that 
by solving set of equations we get a solution which satisfies all the equations and in our case that solution will be the operating point of power system which is the voltage the angle and the real and reactive power generations so uh, okay uh, so how can we solve these equations the first important point is that the number of equations must be equal to number of variables let's see if it is the case or not so uh, as we know that the uh, the load is variable and to uh, balance that the generation is also variable so obviously we have four generation variables two for real power and two for reactive power we have four load variables which is uh, two for real power and two for reactive power on both the buses and then we have two buses and the voltage angle and magnitude on both the buses so in total we have 12 variables but as you can see that we only have four equations for the system so it is not possible to solve mathematically now in order to fix that some variables are kept constant at the starting of the numerical methods so that process gives rise to this nomenclature of swing bus pv bus and pq bus just to obtain the solubility in the system uh, now at one particular bus we will fix the voltage magnitude and angle as a reference of voltage that will be swing bus all the generation buses will have constant real power and voltage magnitude all the load buses will have a constant real power demand and reactive power demand okay uh, so here we fixed four load variables which is a two for real power and two for reactive power two real power generation variables one voltage magnitude and one angle for first bus now these steps are uh, okay we understood that these steps are used to solve the system of equations but these steps or the uh, like swing bus pv bus and pq bus also have a good explanation in uh, terms of power system uh, okay uh, so that explanation i will uh, i will go into detail in future videos so we got the answer for our first question that how the types of buses are generated now the second question is why numerical methods let's understand this with the basic dc network example uh, we have three branches in the system and by experience you know that uh, when uh, we apply kcl we get three equations for each branch something like this now if you remember we used to solve linear system of equations either by gauss elimination method or simply by substitution for example we obtain an analytical expression for i3 in terms of i1 i2 from equation 3 and put it into equation 1 and 2 the expression is obtained something like this this is the expression now this expression we put into equation 1 and 2 and then we use the two equations to find out the variables i1 and i2 and uh, then we find the i3 okay uh, we are familiar with this approach from elementary mathematics this is a great way to solve set of linear equations however if you look at the power flow equations you can see that variables are present inside sine and cosine terms and it is not easy to obtain analytical expressions for such equations and quite impossible to solve for a system as large as india or usa where thousands of buses are present this leads to the use of numerical methods in power flow so uh, here we got answer to both our questions that uh, from where the types of buses arise and why we use numerical methods now let me uh, show you a small visualization of how numerical methods work okay uh, i have taken these simple linear equations and the process is uh, the process of numerical method will be similar for nonlinear system also but it is quite hard to visualize for nonlinear systems so i use these linear equations okay here the intersection point which is 5 and 3 satisfies both equations and hence it is the solution of the system now 
uh, first we take now what are the steps first we take an initial assumption for one variable that is y is equals to 0 in this case and put it into first equation now we get the value of x is equals to 3.5 for first iteration now second step is we put this x is equals to 3.5 in second equation and obtain the value of y that is 2.25 these two steps conclude first iteration now this value of y will be used as the start of second iteration and we will feed it into first equation and then so on let's see how these steps converge to the final solution of equation final solution for the system of equation with visualization okay so this is the initial assumption uh, here it is y is equals to zero and uh, when we put it into the first equation which is represented by red line it gives us this value 3.5 and then this value is again when you put this 3.5 into the second equation then it gives us this value then we again put this value uh, further into the first equation then again into the second equation then first equation then second equation then first then second then first and so on so basically uh, we can uh, continue till we get our desired value with the minimum uh, with which is into the tolerance zone okay so this is the step and you can see that as we proceed further uh, we are going or converging towards the solution so uh, i would recommend if you want to try you can start with any initial value instead of y is equals to zero and you will uh, con you will ultimately go near the x is equals to five and y is equals to three which is the solution okay so uh, that's all from uh, my side guys uh, if you have any query you can write into the comment box i will respond thank you